Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to have a Sister Wives discussion. Oh, my favorite. We are in season four, which is the season of the cul-de-sac. It is the season, apparently, of my Sister Wives closet. The genesis. There's a lot of stuff going on. Before we get into it, though, we got to issue you a disclaimer. Please, hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically in correct podcast we say a lot of bad words we are dumb objectively and so we have dumb takes so if you're so funny you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby (laughs) but if you're down to party and talk about some polygamists Mm. welcome to this dumpster all right oh yeah and if you are down to party be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe so much crazy shit up on there and if you are watching on youtube first of all welcome thank you for being here please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do helps us in the algorithm and if you're helping us there that means we're growing we're getting fatter Mm -hmm. And that is what we're good at. That's what we want. So thank you in advance. Thank you. So before we get into the episode, um, I do know that Mary was on oh a podcast with Rachel Yucatel. I think that's her name. I Did forget you the name. No, it? it was too boring. Yeah. And I saw like the juiciest tidbits in a preview, and it was all just bullshit that Mary has said before. She's talking about her worthy up. Ugh. She's talking about Janelle being integrated into the family and whether she was shocked because Janelle had been married to her brother. But this is stuff that we already knew. Did My you listen God. to it? No, you sent me the link today and I tried to listen to it, but it was so boring. I was already snoring like 10 minutes into it. And I was reading the comments and everybody was complaining about how Mary's like still right. continuing to lie. Yep. Like she's deflecting when she's talking about the catfish situation and not taking any blame and still yes i'm like come on how do you not take any blame for the catfish situation 10 years later it's wild how are you 50 something years on the planet and mm-hmm. you can't be yourself like even a little bit like you're still gonna be fake you're still gonna be lying and trying to publicize for yourself you are way more interesting if you didn't lie yeah you would be way more entertaining if you started telling the truth and dropping some secrets everyone would like you so much more i was reading on one of the subreddits uh today and people were complaining about how so many of us in the community constantly talk about how the browns are liars and they're lying and basically the question was like what happened to nuance like (sighs) there's like different layers here so they're not always just lying to us and why do we always have to call them liars i'm like every single season it's (laughs) every single person has been lying mary above all else has been such a fucking liar yes that's why nobody trusts you mary that's why there's only four people going to disneyland so that you can mentor them mary if you had any integrity there'd be a hundred people you'd be able to stand up on a stage and i would pay fucking money to hear you tell me the truth but none of you can do that yep. and that's why we call them liars because they lie yes it's been 18 seasons of lying and yeah it's entertaining sometimes and yeah sometimes it's juicy because sometimes the real truth will kind of spill out through their lies and through their facial expressions but yeah they are lying and if they're talking about nuance I guess you could make the argument that this is a family and so they want to keep some things private because they're on TV and they don't want to talk about certain things or maybe they you know, embellish some some things for for television, like we see in this episode with Leon and the prank and everything. Like that was so stupid, but still, they're still lying though. In twenty twenty four, I know Mary is like, still like taping for Cody. Like, why would you need to represent him? Why, why would, would you even that? be minimally interested in making him look better? Or your life better in this polygamous fucking family. Hello. You got the short end of the deal, my friend. Like, you don't, do you have any land? She had like one small fucking piece of the property, even though she contributed the most money, I think. True. Like, and what did you get out of it? Nothing. Nothing. Not even the In the very first season, he's melting down your ring, but you are (laughs) on television pretending you are so happy and everything's great. And you're going to Mexico and you're talking about IVF. Lies. It's all lies. That's that's why we say that and that's why like until she's writing the tell-all book yeah with actual 
truth in it. Yeah. Until she's going on a podcast and actually divulging information and telling the truth. Like, I am not interested. I'm not going to no. sit through fucking Rachel Ukedil's podcast Ugh. while you just spin, spin, and spin again. Yeah. And Miss tell us the that. same crap we've been hearing this whole entire time. Speaking of the book, we've gotten a couple comments on YouTube saying we need to review the current book that's out. Current book? Yeah, there's a book. You mean the old book that they yeah. wrote? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the only book that they have, I think. But yeah. we need to read that. I haven't read it. I haven't read it either. And I think we were talking about it a few months ago, something maybe to do on Patreon. Yeah. Just kind of go chapter by chapter and dismantle. That'd be great. The lies. We should do that. I would actually like to. I'd like to read the book and yeah. see what they have to say because not many years have passed since they wrote that book and everything has fallen apart. Yes, we should read it. Don't you have it? I Did I order it? Because <laughs> I feel <laughs> I like I told did. you it. It might be right over it there. I don't remember. There's bookcase. like a whole wall of books right here. I might have it somewhere. Yeah. But we should. I, I'd be open to that, but that would probably be a Patreon thing. Yeah, probably. All right, let's get into this episode, season four, episode eight, entitled No Place Like Home. Okay. Utah. Yeah, which was kind of a sad episode, especially for all of these kids. So we have the four like elder kids. We have Leon, we have Madison, we have Logan, and we have Hunter all on spring break. And they're taking a road trip up to Utah. They're going to be staying with family and stuff. And they're going to visit their old friends and their old stomping grounds. And they're going to go visit their childhood home mm -hmm. and it's pretty sweet i felt really sad for them because i mean going back to like where you're from and where you spent your whole life i mean that's devastating yes especially when your current life in las vegas is Sucks. not what you want which yeah. it sounds like the kids especially the older kids really don't like las vegas oh yeah they're all freaking depressed and you can see it on their faces mm -hmm. and even even Leon, who's like trying to produce themselves on TV in this moment, it's kind of interesting how young they are and they're like so involved in polygamy and sister wives and all of this stuff. But they're trying to put on a front like, yeah, no, we were sad when we moved to Vegas, but now it's fine. We've gotten used to it. It's like, no, you're not. It no. sucks still. And for as much as all four of those kids are talking about going back to Utah, once they graduate, I don't think any of them actually did. I mean, didn't Hunter go to the Air Force Academy? I think Logan stayed in Vegas. I could be wrong. I know Leon, I think, ended up in Chicago. And then Maddie ended up getting groomed. Oh, yeah. Sorry, and I'm not, I'm not saying <laughs> Going she Going out was, to South Carolina. I'm so. not saying she was groomed. Well, but. but she ended up getting married and heading out to South Carolina. So that never happened for any of the kids. But you can really get the sense of how much they are not happy in Vegas and just want to return to something that feels better for them. Yeah. And it just knowing what we know now, it's just really shitty. Like I understand at the time they were scared of being investigated by the Utah okay. police and they were running from the law. Were they? I don't know. I don't trust it. They but weren't. Just like, it just sucks that you uprooted your kids in such a terrible, traumatic way. Scared them. Three days notice scared them thinking that their dad was going to get arrested and that's why you had to go to Vegas. And then never going back to that single family mm -hmm. unit. Like in the house, everybody has their own spaces. Cody can spread his time evenly or pretend like he's spreading his time evenly. And everybody was happy. So it's just, it's sad for these older kids who were teenagers and they had to completely change everything. Yes. I mean, I agree. I thought it was really melancholic. And I also thought it was very interesting when the adults were on the couch and Cody was talking about the house in Lehigh and he was saying that he was actually the happiest in his relationships in that house because yeah. he did have access to all of his kids and there was kind of room to grow. But I'm like, then... Why didn't you stay? Well, the reason you didn't stay is because Robin has family in Las Vegas. Yep. And I think it was Robin that wanted to move to Las Vegas. And so you created this storyline. You got everybody to Vegas. And then when Robin wanted to move to Flagstaff because Dayton was going to go to college there, then we created this new storyline so that you guys could all move to Flagstaff. I think Robin is the impetus. She never had the desire to integrate into this family in the way that they were used to functioning. And that is what the kids are mourning. Yep. 
And also kids aren't stupid. No. Especially these older kids. They're seeing what's happening to the culture of their entire family and how their father is just probably not coming around as much as he used to. And that's why they're sad too. It's not just because of geography. It's because the entire culture of the family, the vibe of the family, and the love in the family has shifted. Well, and then you have Mary making excuses for Cody on the couch and being like, yeah, it was a lot easier for Cody when we all had one house because he could just pop on over, open a door, and he'd be in another house and it'd be fine. And he could see everybody whenever he wanted to. But now he's stretched so thin and it's really stressful for him to have to travel between all of these houses. And it's like, okay, Mary, you're making excuses because he's obviously not coming to your house. Mm -mm. He's not coming to Christine's house. Mm -mm. He's coming over to Janelle's because she's got the money. And then he's coming over to Robin's because she got the punani. So that's what he's doing. And if he wanted to, he would. He would go over to their houses and actually enjoy his time with all of them and understand that this is his responsibility as the polygamous patriarch. But he don't. No. But Mary is just totally sucking his D totally kissing his ass without sucking the well, d exactly. without any physical affection yes. whatsoever Pining. but like when you think about him melting down the ring in yes. the first season that is such a violent declaration yep. of anti-marriage yep like that's cody saying fuck you this symbol of our union i am destroying it and i'm going to use it for something else that represents something totally different like it is a huge thing symbolic thing to say yeah and so for mary to continue to pretend that everything's okay and to act like she's so concerned why are we so concerned about fucking cody i'm sorry you have to walk from robin's house to christine's house you've got like a one mile fucking radius that you have to walk why are we so worried you don't work right what do you do right. how do you contribute to these families and to these children every time we see the little ones isabel not isabel but aspen's holding the little ones we've got mm -hmm. leon taking care of the babies we've got the older kids doing the work for cody so I'm like, why are we so fucking concerned about Cody? I don't know. Because the world revolves around him because he's the sun and Mary and Janelle and Christine and Robin are the planets orbiting. <laughs> and obviously the other three wives are very far off. <laughs> They're asteroids. Sidebar. What? So, you know, I get my sister wives Google alerts. <laughs> now you turn them back on? Well, they've been on. They're the oh. only ones that I'll keep on, but I haven't really been looking at them very much. But what I have been seeing kind of a lot of is how worried Cody and Robin probably are that in particular, Christine and Janelle are no longer contributing to the funds and like how much of a desperate situation they are likely to be in. There are no plans currently to develop the property on Coyote Pass. Of course. They don't have the funding to do that. With all of the women gone and no longer contributing financially, like what the fuck are they doing? Yeah. Furthermore, I could have swore. Now, I wouldn't be able to cite it, or else I would right now. But I could have swore I saw an article not too long ago with a picture of Mary and Janelle. And the implication was something legal. Oh. Like, is it possible that these two women might be taking some legal action against Cody. That is just, I'm pulling that fucking shit right out of my ass. I don't know. <laughs> this could have been a dream that I had because I want it so much. I can't see Janelle and Mary. I could see Janelle and Christine doing something yeah. like that. Janelle and Mary, I'm not sure, but I could have swore I saw something rumbling about that. So I'm just wondering what's happening Ooh. in the Cody and Robin McMansion universe and oh. how scared they are. And they're, has also been a rumor that they want to renew their vows for season 19 or season 20 because you know stop yeah christine just had this big beautiful panoramic gorgeous wedding and so i was wondering at the time and i'm sure you were too like what's robin thinking after her weird fucking wedding with all those brown dresses right she's watching this and she's probably so jealous and so then to hear that there might be a renewal ceremony? Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> Process that. That would be so amazing because for one, it's going to be cringe as fuck. Yeah. It's going to be gaudy yeah. and it's going to be super corny because it's going to be her and Cody confessing their love to each other and 
probably signifying something new like it's a new beginning like I'm the one that stayed and we had such a beautiful family together something like that mm-hmm. but that would be amazing if that was in season 19 after everything it's that's happened not going to be season 19 because that's already in the can well you said it was season 19 season 19 season 20 oh my said, god yeah. that they're talking about it like yeah I could Give see I could see a world where they they would think that people would want to see oh. that. See, the difference is with Christine, we are so happy you got out, of course, honey. Yeah. You escaped the cult. You found yourself a man. I got a man. Yeah. Ew. Found yourself a man. You are so happy, and we love that for you. But like, nobody's happy for you, Robin and Cody. Oh my God, not at all. And I would be butthurt if TLC paid for them to have some sort of an extravagant vowel renewal because well, you know they're not going to pay for it no not at all and like who would even go <laughs> like really would the kids oh, go good point because i wouldn't if if i found out oh. cody after everything you're right he's my dad after all of this shit that's happened is renewing his vows with this witch of a woman mm-hmm. i'd be like <laughs> fuck you dad i ain't yeah. going to your yeah. dumb wedding 100 percent. nobody Absolutely would go not. And I don't think they have any friends. Maybe no. his bros, but I'm not sure who oh, Nathan, yeah. <laughs> who we saw in this episode. I'm like, oh, yeah. there you are, Nathan. Yeah. Ooh, yikes. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> Big yikes. Yeah. Anyway, just wanted to go off on a tangent. Back oh, to God. you, babe. Well, we're back in Utah with the teens. And yeah. we kind of hear a little bit more from like Leon in particular with their plans to go to college in Utah, which we know never happens, and their plans to live polygamy, (laughs) to be a doctor, and to be a sister wife, which is just hilarious. It is. To see the change. Because they're like 15 or something in this scene, or like 14 or something like that. They're so young. They don't know what's ahead of them. Sweet summer child. Yes. But I I did love seeing that, like a blast from the past, talking all about Mormonism and how they take their religion so seriously, and now they've deviated quite a lot from that. Well, and you can really see how Leon was the staunchest defender of the family, of the religion, and... Things really, really changed. And I think that has to be chalked up to the parents and the example, the demonstration that Leon and the rest of the kids saw with the parents. Like everything was a lie. Everything fell apart. And none of these kids are practicing Mormonism. Did you, did somebody tell you that directly? Yeah, somebody had said that like Logan and them were not even part of the Mormon church because they drink. I think Ethel told me that. Mm-hmm. And some people commented on YouTube saying that. So I don't think any of the kids are even yeah. a part of even Latter-day Saints. That like, is directly connected to the parents yep. and the life that they modeled to those children. Oh, 1,000%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then meanwhile, the kids are in Utah. We bop on over to the adults and we have... A little segment. Oh my god! About my sister wife's closet. Wild. Okay, so the last we had heard about Robin and her God-given her gift dream to design jewelry was the Christmas episode. The last Christmas episode yeah. must have been season three when she presented the other wives with her handcrafted jewelry, <laughs> her handcrafted yeah, her silver hand jewelry. And she mentioned at that point that she was designing. I don't think she mentioned my sister wife's closet at that point, but she did in this episode. And all of a sudden we're having a Brown family meeting, which is the same table we meet at in order to discuss becoming real estate agents and also opening a a fitness gym. And now we're having another meeting to discuss my sister wife's closet. And this time they have a jeweler with them who's just like, why am I here? Because right. this is a dumb, dis- dumb idea. And, and Cody Robin, and God, Robin, sorry, Robin pulls I out just, her little I sketchbook <laughs> with one page, just with these like little doodles. <laughs> Terrible. Like it's, it's an, it's an S and a W and a W, but it looks like tits. It looks like a ball sack. It looks like ball sacks. I'm like, how, are you so Mormon that you don't understand that looks like boobies? Like, what is that? Or like like hearts on hearts on hearts on hearts on hearts on hearts on hearts. And I'm just like the most basic. It's really designs. bad. And then you see the actual models that they've created. And Cody's talked about how it's so much cheaper 
to start up this business than it is to start up Fundamental Fitness. Obviously, a side dig to Janelle. And I'm looking at the quality of this jewelry that's been designed. And I'm like, that shit is not made out of silver or nothing. That's that made out of like shitty. nickel. Yeah. It's, that's why it's so fucking cheap to start up. And that's why you're selling it for like $90 mm-hmm. <laughs> for a shitty ass necklace that Janelle is totally criticizing during yeah. this little meeting. Yeah. Some of the designs that Robin came up with herself. What did she call them? Trite? Yes. The heart one specifically, right. she said, was very trite. Yeah. Which I, was so I, good. I loved it. Because it is. It's it very is. basic. And it's silly. And I mean, Robin is being indulged by yes. Cody. And Robin is in his ear. Robin is turning his neck. Again, she's the reason we've moved to Las Vegas, I do believe. And like, I think she's controlling this entire family. And I think the women have known that. Like, it is been known but it's starting to be really really obvious and there was a conversation I don't know if it was on the couch opining about this or whether it was at the table itself but Cody was talking about how Robin's business the profit from this business would be able to actually fund Janelle's business the gym Mm -hmm. and Robin acted so excited about that that's the beautiful part of this whole plan (laughs) is all the profits that I make can be funneled into your business that I already know is not going to happen because while I am turning Cody's neck and while I am in his ear talking about all the shit that I want plus all of his time I'm also telling him that this gym is not a good idea Uh -uh. the overhead is way too much and by the way do you really think Janelle's gonna to go to the gym i can just hear it yeah oh 100 i can just hear it and i mean look the gym idea is dumb <laughs> like, <it's laughs> and costly dumb. Yeah. yeah these are not business people beatrice no not at all it would have been better if they all went into real estate like yes. had a practical career in something that could actually make them money but no they want to be entrepreneurs they want to be business people Mm -hmm. and so they create these dumb ideas but then they go with robin's idea out of all of them and you can tell like all the wives except for mary who is bfs with robin at the time everyone is like this sucks this is a dumb idea this jewelry is ugly as fuck Mm -hmm. nobody's gonna buy it and nobody does buy it right newsflash heads up i mean i've seen an episode or two in the future where they're going to like farmer's markets and stuff and trying to sell this shit. Oh, no. And it's so expensive. And all these old ladies at farmer's markets. Yeah. Who old ladies love jewelry. They love tacky jewelry, okay? That's just what it is. But they go to this, their their bins, and they're like, $90 for nickel alloy? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> and nobody buys anything. Really? Nobody buys oh, anything. Oh, I love it. And I did hear rumblings that they're going to pitch some investors. Yes! They're looking for like multiple millions of dollars to invest yes! in this crummy fucking business. They evaluate my sister wife's closet <laughs> at like $10 million. That's awesome. Because they're they're le- they're they're believing they can leverage yes. the audience that is tuning in for Sister Wives at this time, and it was a high it like was a high rated show yeah. on TLC. But they're believing they can leverage the audience into sales. Yeah. But the fact is that they had multiple, many thousands upon thousands of web hits each month. Nobody was buying. No. Nobody was buying. Of course not. Because it sucks. Because the designs are bad. Because Robin, you have no talent. None at all and that's why you can see when janelle criticizes her heart design she's like i like the sw that's cool we can we i can like turn the testicles that into the testicles great. look great <laughs> she's like i like the meaning behind that but the hearts those are kiddish those are terrible and you can see robin's face like you know she's crying to cody about that that night mm-hmm. i can't believe janelle's such a bitch to me why would she criticize my work <laughs> i really liked it Oh, God. You know she's thinking that those designs are inspired by God. Yeah. Like, this came straight from inspiration, from (laughs) God. These are holy designs, and they're going to sell. And that is why we should pull the trigger on my business first and then wait on all this other stuff that we're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what ends up happening. If Robin went into business with Garrick Merrifield in a jewelry designing Mm -hmm. business, maybe they could actually make some money. (laughs) God, Garrick's the worst too. <laughs> What's up with these polygamists that think they can design jewelry? I these know. boobs. They're so lame. And then back to the kids in Utah. So yeah. we have like a little prank that was kind of teased as like a very serious thing. But it's a prank that the other kids are playing on Leon, which is that they're going to tell Leon that Hunter got arrested for having alcohol <laughs> past curfew. 
And they tell Leon, and Leon freaks the fuck out. Like, yeah. actually, mm-hmm. is dead serious. Are you kidding me? My brother stomps out of the room, <laughs> screaming. And all the teenagers are laughing, totally making fun of Leon. I did kind of feel bad for Leon a little bit, because I feel like they get picked on a lot. Yeah. But also, it's kind of easy to pick on <laughs> Leon for Well, this. Leon takes themselves very seriously. Yes. Clearly. And their religion very seriously, which the other kids don't care And Leon about. is also arrogant. Yeah. And Leon thinks the world of Leon. Yes. And I'm going slowly because I'm a boomer. Yeah. And I want to get the pronouns right. But so that's why I'm speaking very slowly because yeah. I want to be respectful. Duh. But I don't have a lot of respect historically in the canon for Leon yeah. because I think Leon has conducted themselves like an asshole sometimes. Totally. And in this moment, I'm like, Leon, get over yourself. I'm like, chill the fuck out. Whatever. Like, calm down. Like, my first instinct, if that's my brother, I'd be like, okay, let me cover for you. Like, right. we'll come up with something so you don't get into trouble. Like, exactly. that's what I would be thinking. Same. So, let's get curious response by I'm Leon. I'm already thinking about lies to tell the parents. Yes. <laughs> like, 100%. What happened to yes. cover your ass? But Leon, already freaking out. What? <laughs> Oh. screaming it's great and then they tell leon it was a prank and leon laughs about it and leon's like oh you're in for it i'm gonna prank y'all which i doubt yeah and then they all go and have a picnic in 45 degree weather right and hunter's like this sucks <laughs> And they just have like bags of food. Yeah. It looks like there's a head of lettuce in there. They're supposed yeah. to make sandwiches, but it's 40 degrees in Utah and it's not a lot of fun, but they do it anyway. Yeah. And everyone's bitching about it. And Logan gets more pissed off because he's the oldest one there. He's like, I just shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. Essentially, is he what says, he tells man, him. man the fuck up. Yeah. Man the fuck up and quit your bitching. Yeah. And Leon's like, <gasps> oh my God, I can't believe you said the You're F cursing. word. Oh. And then we get into this conversation with the kids about how Leon and not on how logan does have a propensity among the kids to swear because he's a bad boy he's a bad boy and he's gonna go to college yeah he's his own person he can say (laughs) fuck thanks and then we go to the parents on the couch and they too talk about logan you know testing the waters with swearing i'm like bitch i know you should have caught me when um, I was 16 and 17 years old with my ass out, my oh, pussy out, real. all the shit I was doing. I'm like, for Logan, real. you are an angel, a saint. A total saint. A saint. Well, and I actually really respected Janelle for her position on this because she's obviously his mom and she's speaking out about it. She's like, I have noticed he's experimenting with some colorful language because he knows that it will shock me, but I'm just not going to react to it because I know he only ever swears when he's frustrated. And like, I know that that's just his outlet and I don't think it's a representation of his character. And I'm like, that's cool because then Christine is like, well, we shouldn't be letting our kids say (laughs) F-bombs and they're getting influenced by these Western schools and it's just, it's not good. I know. She's so childlike. Oh, I know. She's so childlike uh, in a lot of ways, very similar to Leon. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But I'm like, it's, it's fine. But I know it's in Mormon culture, like alcohol and cursing. Yeah, and all these but like three minutes later, all of the adults are drinking. We have a wine yeah. rack at uh, Christine's house. We've got a wine rack at Janelle's house. We've got Cody with all of his beer in his shopping cart. So shut the fuck up and let the boys say fuck. I know. It's not a big deal. Chill acts. It's ridiculous. And then we have the kids finally at the end visiting the Lehigh house. And I think... Someone's sister is living there. It's an aunt or a cousin or like something. Cody's sister. Yeah, I don't know. I don't care. member. But they're taking care of the house and it looks totally different and it looks cleaner. <laughs> yeah, it does look like, well, there's not 7,000 people in the house. Yeah. So. so the kids visit and they're like, wow, everything's changed. And they all get kind of emotional about it. And Madison actually starts crying. I felt really bad because she was the one that hated it the most. She was very outspoken. Her and Hunter, when they initially moved to Vegas. And it made me sad. It made me think about when I was visiting my Nani and Poppy's house before they lost it. They foreclosed on their house. And they had lived there for 30 years. And we were cleaning everything out. And the last time we visited there, I totally cried. Because so I'm like, man, we're not going to have it anymore. It's not the same. I'm sorry, Beatrice. No, it's okay. But well, it's just sad. also, like, didn't you change schools a lot growing up, too? Oh, and I moved these every kids summer. 
have been moved, especially the older kids have yeah. been moved around. I think initially, primarily, that was in Utah or maybe Wyoming to Utah. But like these kids have been moved around by these parents. Yep. And so that's also why they're crying again, because the culture of the family has shifted and changed. And nothing is certain. No. They have like no solid ground to stand upon. They cannot depend on their parents. Their parents are st- stupid they're dumb they're dumb with money yep. they're dumb with life choices and they think they're doing the right thing for the family but it's not the right thing for the children especially the individual children they're not thinking about these older no. kids and so that too is why they're crying and i do feel bad for that yeah i feel bad for them a lot and then we have cody talking on the couch this is where he's saying like yeah I felt the best in my polygamist faith and living my polygamous lifestyle in that house because it was the easiest and I could see everybody when I wanted to. And then he says, I hope we can have like one house or all the houses close together so that way I can visit everybody when I want when to. When I want to. And I'm like, that's very clear. What Foreshadowing. Right there. Yes. Yeah. The schedule, the calendar. Yep. And how many days he's going to end up spending at these different houses. So already in season four, which again, I think is just two years since the beginning of the show. Yeah. Already he's spending more time with Robin and yep. less time with these other wives. It's already happening. It's so messed up. And we know once he gets in the cul-de-sac, we're going to see him lying about how he mm-hmm. divides his time equally. But we know now that yep. he wasn't doing that at all. And he was always at Robin's house. So it's like, dude, you have all your family in proximity. And you still don't mm-hmm. choose to see them. And then you wonder why all your kids hate you. Right. Like, and hello. that is why, Reddit, we say they're liars. Yeah. At their core, they've been lying this entire time. Have they lied about every single thing? Of course not. No. But the primary important things that they have put forward in the show, they have been lying about. Yep. And they're not even in the religion and in the faith anymore. Exactly. I don't think. No, not now. Mm-mm, none of them. I think Janelle maybe, but mm-hmm. I don't think she's like as strict as she used to be. Well, but she's I think, drinking, so yeah, no. Yeah, so. yeah. And I can see Janelle saying some curse words. Oh, for sure. And I think she did say she some did curse words. She did on season 18. Last, yes, these last couple of episodes, uh, yeah. seasons she's been swearing to. So yeah. everything changes. Seasons change, as yes. Expose told us. 100%. And we are watching it change real time. It's pretty crazy watching these earlier seasons, but mm-hmm. I do love it because it's just interesting to see all of the signs that we were all blind to back in 2012 when we were like, oh, this is a cool family. Yeah, and it's just an unconventional family, but yeah. love is love. It's That's supposed great. to be multiplied, not divided. Well, <laughs> as it turns out, it don't work like that. No, it don't. Well, do you have any other thoughts about this episode before we head on out here or anything else you want to say to these raggles? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you leave us a glowing five-star review on your favorite podcast ah! platform. It really helps us grow the pod and we really appreciate it. We will be back next week to talk Unexpected and more Sister Wives. So make sure you come back for that. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and Peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.